The Washington Post just released a bombshell report, which they are calling the Afghanistan Papers. And in a nutshell, what this essentially tells us is that the Afghanistan war was doomed from the get-go because the strategy that we implemented to fight terrorism was not the correct strategy. We were trying to fight a problem, but we weren't actually attacking the root cause. So for example, we were in Afghanistan operating with this assumption that we fight terrorism by attacking terrorists directly. The problem is that corruption in Afghanistan was systemic. It was something that plagued society and corruption was such a big issue that it led to nationwide destabilization in Afghanistan and it actually led to more terrorism. But because we didn't understand Afghanistan or understand these political factors that led to terrorism, well, we were effectively fighting what was a losing battle and we're still there. So I'm not going to go to the Washington Post article, but I will go to a summary that I think is more concise from Slate. And here's what they say. This is from Fred Kaplan. The war in Afghanistan, 18 years old and still raging at a cost of nearly a trillion dollars, 2,300 U.S. troops killed and more than 20,000 injured, has been a muddle from the beginning, steered by vague and wavering strategies, fueled by falsely rosy reports of progress from the battlefield and almost certainly doomed to failure all along. This is the inescapable conclusion of a secret U.S. government history of the war consisting of 2,000 pages based on interviews with more than 400 participants obtained and published by the Washington Post on Monday after years of battles to declassify the documents, written by the Office of the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction, an agency created by Congress in 2008 to investigate waste and fraud. The report titled Lessons Learned is the most thorough official critique of an ongoing American war since the Vietnam War Review commissioned in 1967 by then Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara. Daniel Ellsberg leaked what came to be known as the Pentagon Papers in 1971. One, though widely disseminated, they were officially declassified only in 2011. The Afghanistan Papers, as the Post dubs the report, is narrower in scope than McNamara's project. The latter delved into the entire history of U.S. involvement in Vietnam and incorporated top-secret memos and other documents from throughout the national security bureaucracy. Still, the new report resonates with the same dread and melancholy about a war built on ignorance, lies, and counterproductive policies. Central to the current war effort and its failure was corruption. It was central because the Afghan government couldn't defeat the Taliban insurgents or win the support of its people as long as it was corrupt from top to bottom. The United States failed because the billions of dollars we poured into the country only made Afghanistan's corruption worse. Now there's more, but I just want to pause right there and reflect on what we've learned so far. We've been in Afghanistan for 18 years. And we can't leave because apparently we have to clean up this mess that we've made. Except maybe if we're the ones making the mess, we're incapable of cleaning it up because we don't know what we're doing. We're like a bull in a china shop and we don't know how to clean up that mess. We can't necessarily take inventory of every item that we've damaged. So the best thing that we can do for us and the people of Afghanistan is to just get out once and for all because we're not helping them. And the tactics that we implemented to try to help them, it backfired tremendously. Like the idea was that we can turn Afghanistan into a thriving democracy by giving them a lot of aid, but corruption was rampant. So what would happen? We'd give them the aid and that money would be used for patron client relationships. It was fueling their corruption effectively, which means that we were making the situation worse. And we thought we were helping. Do you understand why nation, nation building doesn't work? It's because we don't know what we're doing. Our elected officials don't know what they're doing. And this should make that crystal clear if it wasn't already obvious to people. Now, more on this. Ryan Crocker, former ambassador to Afghanistan and Iraq, told the investigators in a 2016 interview, you just cannot put those amounts of money into a very fragile state and society and not have it fuel corruption. He added that the same thing happened in Iraq, where corruption is pandemic and deeply rooted and where it's hard to see how a better political order can ever be established. A big problem, Crocker said, 
was a perennial American urge when intervening in a foreign conflict to start fixing everything as fast as we can. We pour in billions of dollars, which wind up in the hands of the powerful. The report estimates that 40% of U.S. aid to Afghanistan was pocketed by officials, gangsters, or the insurgents themselves, who become more corrupt still. Sarah Chise, who served as an advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and who lived in Afghanistan for several years, told the investigators in 2015 that the problem was rooted in Washington. Fighting terrorism was the chief U.S. mission and some officials understood that corruption is a cause of terrorism, but Chai said the notion hasn't sunk in enough for the causal flip to happen, i.e. for the officials to see that countering corruption had to be a key ingredient in countering terrorism. In September of 2009, as the Obama administration was debating a new policy toward the Afghanistan war, Admiral Mike Mullen, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, testified at a Senate hearing that the main problem is clearly the lack of legitimacy of the government in Kabul. Senator Lindsey Graham pushed the issue. Quote, we could send a million troops and that wouldn't restore legitimacy in the government, he asked. That is correct, Mullen replied. The threat of corruption, he added, is every bit as significant as the Taliban. Now, in spite of Mike Mullen's testimony there, in spite of knowing that corruption was the issue, what did he recommend Obama do? He recommended that Obama send 40,000 troops to help legitimize the Afghanistan government. Let me repeat that. Rather than trying to root out the issue of corruption itself, if that was even possible, he wanted to send American troops to convince the people Af of Afghanistan that their government was in fact legitimate and they should accept their government's authority. Because if anything is going to legitimize an illegitimate government who is corrupt to its core, it's going to be a foreign occupier who's trying to convince you of that. Do you understand how ridiculous this is? So Obama took Mullen's advice and it didn't work. They were not convinced that the Afghan government was legitimate. And most of the people within Obama's administration actually agreed with Mullen's advice. But one person actually disagreed. And you'll be surprised to know who that was. It was actually Joe Biden who didn't think that would be a good strategy. However, Joe Biden himself still didn't really have a good strategy because he still wanted to send 10,000 more troops. But instead of having those troops try to convince the people of Afghanistan to accept their government's legitimacy, he wanted them to train the Afghanistan army to, uh, I guess, either fight corruption directly or fight terrorists. Either way, the strategy failed and we're still in Afghanistan with presumably no end in sight. Now, eventually in 2010, General David Petraeus took over and he assembled an anti-corruption task force. You'd think finally, right? Somebody is doing the right thing. Now, what that task force found out was that if you really want to actually help the people of Afghanistan, then what you need to do is stop giving them aid because that aid is fueling corruption. It's not helping the situation. What was General Petraeus' uh, response? Meh. He assembled the task force to assist them. They tell him that the aid is essentially fueling corruption and our efforts there are futile. And his response is to not take their advice. What a colossal failure. So across three different administrations, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump, we have used the same strategy that is not working. We are trying to fight terrorism by fighting it directly, but we're not addressing the root issue that's leading to terrorism. And we're still there because we haven't rooted out the terrorists because we're not fighting it effectively. And we have to be there until we fight and defeat terrorists. Like, do you understand? The situation is not going to get any better. Nation building does not work because we don't understand the dynamics, the internal politics of these countries in which we are trying to nation build. Not every society is ready for, you know, democratization, even though we want people to be free. We want civil rights and civil liberties. Trying to force it on people when they don't have the institutions necessary to sustain a thriving democracy is just a fool's game. It's not going to work.
it's not going to work. And you'd think that we would have learned our lesson time after time, but uh, we won't. And after the Afghanistan papers revealed that once again, we fucked up by not implementing the right strategy, do you think that we'll honestly learn our lesson? No. Now, there are indications that our drone war in various countries, Yemen, Pakistan, Somalia, is also fueling terrorism because we're trying to fight terrorists, but what are we doing? We are bombing innocent civilians and individuals who are affected by drones and terrorized by drones, for lack of a better word, are getting radicalized and they are wanting to fight the United States because of the havoc that we are causing in their country. So, I mean, I don't know what to say. U.S. imperialism has not done the world any favors. The only sector of society that this has benefited is the military-industrial complex. War capitalism is incredibly lucrative, and that's why we're doing it. Period. But, I mean, what this shows is that our leaders don't have the slightest idea about what they're doing in these countries. They don't understand the countries that they are invading, and they certainly don't have solutions to the problems. We're making matters worse. This is not surprising whatsoever. Nonetheless, you know, to see this, you know, uh, play out with these documents um, and confirm what we suspected, it really is important. Now, will uh, there be much attention paid to this? I suspect not. Regardless, it's still important.